young Jewish and non-Jewish men form defense groups. There are fights on Rembrandt Square, the center of city's nightlife. About 60 gentlemen came here to attack us. The doorman, who was standing outside, locked the doors immediately. They couldn't come inside straight away, so in no time at all, they had smashed the windows. Even a bicycle was thrown inside. When the first NSB members came in, I grabbed my bludgeon and beat them up properly. But they were 60 armed men. We really had to surrender. They made an awful mess of things. One glass was left whole. In one of the disturbances, WA member Hendrik Cote is so seriously wounded that he dies a few days later. In response, the Germans close off a Jewish quarter. They set up a Jewish council which is supposed to maintain order. A few days after Cote's funeral, the Jewish owner of an ice cream parlor sprays a German patrol with ammonia gas to get him out of his shop. Now the Germans decide to act. On Saturday, February 22nd and Sunday, February 23rd, 1941, 425 Jewish men are arrested, brutally herded together and taken away in squad cars. The Germans hang up posters justifying the roundup, but the Amsterdam population is deeply shocked. During a meeting at the Nordermarkt, communists call for a protest strike. That night, pamphlets calling the strike are typed and stenciled. The next morning, the trams are not running. Everyone in the city notices that something is going on. Workers from the shipyards in the northern part of Amsterdam march into the city in massive numbers. Schools, shops, offices and banks empty out. Strikers march through the streets in long files. The next day the strike spreads to the Zaan region and to Hilversum. There are strikes in Haarlem and Utrecht as well. Germans take harsh measures. Shots are fired into the crowd. In Amsterdam, nine people are killed. Hundreds of strikers are arrested. <laughs> 